morning, Happy Valley, and welcome back to another edition of the Penn State 365 podcast. I'm your host, Richie O'Leary, and joined as always when we're talking wrestling, wrestling recruiting analyst on uh, PennState.Rivals.com, Joey Clender. Joey, it was an exciting weekend of NCAAs, so let's just jump right into it. Um, there were so many different things that happened. Uh, I guess, what's your number one takeaway from the weekend? Uh, that this team was far and wide better than any other team in the country. They won by a record number. Mm -hmm. Um, They had it locked up Friday night. Um, You know, it's Penn State's world. Everybody else is living in it in college wrestling, and I think it's going to be that way for some time. Um, You know, the lineup's going to look a little different next year, obviously, with Strachi leaving and Brooks leaving and Drew X leaving, but Mm-hmm. Um. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, this team's just so solid, uh, from top to bottom, and um, you know, I think, I think there's a big possibility they have quite a few more finalists next year, and quite a few national champions next year. So, um, yeah, I mean, great tournament for the team, and everybody wrestled well for the most part. It's just. It's it's unbelievable how much better they are than anybody else. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Um, going through it right now, uh, where, you want to just start weight by weight, or yeah, yeah, it's fine. All right, so let's let's talk a little bit about Braden Davis's performance. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, twenty five was pretty much a crapshoot in terms of uh, who was going to win it, and you know, mm-hmm. just because you had the one seed doesn't mean anything really at that weight. Yeah. Um. You know, obviously, he had a good first two matches. Um, it, to me, it just seemed like even against Unger, a second round match that he won two to one. I think mm-hmm. for whatever reason, he just yeah, I hate to say it, but like you were going, in, you knew like going in the third period, it was gonna or you know, a, ten seconds into the third period, it was gonna be one to one, and it was mm-hmm. gonna be whoever got the takedown first and. I mean, I don't think that there's anything necessarily wrong with that if you're going to go out and be offensive and you're mm-hmm. going to go get takedowns. But I didn't really think that Braden Davis did a great job of proving that he was going to be offensive enough to allow a 1-1 match to be acceptable going, you know, going late into the match. Mm-hmm. Um, just wasn't offensive enough, in my opinion. Um, he had multiple changes to win that Figueroa match. Um I just I think that Braden Davis didn't wrestle up to his potential in this tournament, which is disappointing, but you can't really be too upset because, you know, we didn't know even what was gonna happen at this weight and we weren't really expecting too much at the beginning of the year. We've said that numerous times, but mm-hmm. um you know, uh, one thing I do wanna see, and you know, this is just a personal thing. I'm sure the coaches don't like it either, but you mm-hmm. know, the Figueroa match you know, he, he should have gotten a locked hands, I think, but, you know, the corner didn't challenge it. You know, you can look at the ref and do whatever you would need to do, but you need to be talking to the coaches if you think that they need to throw a brick and try to get you a point over that. Mm-hmm. Looking at the ref and, you know, throwing your hands up and wasting time not getting out from bottom, and then you take your headgear off and toss up the coaching staff underhand, and then you slap Fig's hand and walk off the other corner of the mat. I I mean, uh, grow up. Uh, I I hate to be blunt. I really like Braden Davis, but it it was mm-hmm. you hate seeing that from anybody on the team. Any any, it's just it's childish and it's immature and whatever. But um, you know, he had a great year. He's a lot of fun to watch. He's gonna be you know he's gonna be right there next year. Of course, I mm-hmm. think uh, I think Braden Davis has all the potential in the world. I just think that. At this point, um, he needs a little bit of an attitude check, and I mm-hmm. think that he just needs to. He's just a. He's a freshman in college, true freshman, and yeah. emotions get the best of you. I know, you know. I think there was very high expectations for him that he set on himself, and there's nothing wrong with that. But, um, yeah, I mean, you, you can't be looking at the ref. You're not, you can't get mad at the other wrestler if you're the one that just didn't shoot the whole match. I don't understand the point of that. And then I think it kind of got to the point where, you know, he got dropped down into this consolation side of the bracket and lost the Volk 4-1 to in sudden victory. And mm-hmm. he he had a chance to win that match, too, just didn't finish the shot and got countered, and it cost him. And, 
you know, his tournament was done after that, which is disappointing. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think that Bray Davis, has, he has a really, really, really bright future. I think he's going to start in this team for the next three years, and I think he's going to do some real damage. And I think he'll end up winning a national championship one year. I just think that he needs to get back on his attacks. I think, uh, you know, you didn't really see him do it much late in the year, but he took a lot of risks mm-hmm. in the dual meets portion of the season you know he put himself in a lot of dicey situations was able to get out of it super exciting guy um so yeah i think the sky's the limit for him i just think he kind of i think after figueroa beat him i think he was you know i uh i don't know this but um i think he was a little mentally off the rails at that point just from you know knowing that he wasn't going to win it so but good good year from him yeah. Well, I mean, you said it best. He set the expectations for himself. Winning Big Tens, getting number one seed, you kind of expect that at the bare minimum, whole American status, and uh, he didn't end up getting that. So mm-hmm. lost to eight and five, I believe it was, the seeding. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so it's not, not a good ending to a, a freshman year, but still a good freshman year nonetheless. Um, right. hundred and Wait, who's uh, am I missing one? I'm missing someone. No, you're good. 133. I was going to go to – I was looking at Bo for some, Bo for some uh, reason. I don't know why. Um, Aaron Nagal. Um, yeah. lost to start the match, which was brutal. Mm-hmm. Um, tech fall, win, 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 and another loss to, I think it was Kai, number three overall. Um, I believe so, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, overall thoughts on uh, his little not-so-good start and then a little bounce back. So, you know, obviously when you lose your first match, it's really hard to come back. And mm-hmm. we all saw what Tyler Kasich had to do to get third place after winning, or after losing his first match. Yeah. Um, you know, growing up and, you know, after I got out of high school and everything and going to States and, mm-hmm. you know, those are like the, you always see a kid that really should have won the first match and didn't. And then they're stuck in this situation and he just. He just didn't look very good in the first match. I think Yarbrough just was better than him in every position, which is, you know, uh, pretty surprising. But, um, I mean, he went out and just dominated Aaron. So then he got dropped into that side of the bracket. Uh, you know, he, he won against Klebov, who's from um, from Pennsylvania. I think he's a uh, Northampton kid. And, you know, he put a couple wins together, but then he lost uh, to Kaya Ryan and... You know, his tournament was done. I mean, um, we've talked a lot about Aaron Nagal this year and um, his offensive display. And, you know, he's really just had that one attack to go to all year. And I've I've kind of talked about that in detail quite a few times throughout the year. And <clears throat> I just think he needs to get more offensive attacks. And I think he needs to finish a little better. And he's obviously, you know, he's obviously very, very good. and. He's good in a lot of different situations. He's fun to watch, and um, he's very technical. But, you know, I don't, don't think you can really expect too much only having that one attack. I know he was an All-American last year at Minnesota, and then he came here. And mm-hmm. I think This is another guy that had super high expectations, probably not only for himself, but I think a lot of fans expect him to come in and be a big points contributor in terms of the, the team race and everything. But it has to be a disappointing year. Um, you know, I think we all know Aaron Nagao is super, super capable of being, a, you know, a top five guy in the country. I just think he didn't put it together this year. And it was a super tough weight class. I mean, there's no taking anything away from him. Um, you know, Shalver won Big Tens and took seventh. And mm-hmm. he majored Braggison, who, you know, took fifth. Um, then you had Crookham losing to Vito in the semis. And the fix Vito match in the finals was crazy. and. Mm-hmm. Fix Raggison was crazy. I mean, this was a really stacked weight class. This was a lot of really good kids, but I just think Aaron could Aaron could have at least all American this year. I just think uh I just think there are parts of the tournament don't go your way. And when you when you lose your first match, it's hard. It's very hard to to, to end up placing. So if you lose your first match, you just kinda of put yourself into a shitty situation, unfortunately. Yeah. Um going on to uh hundred and forty one pound mm-hmm. Bobart Wet, number two seed. Um Easy win in the first round, I would say. Uh, not so easy win in the second round. Got a little nervous there against Mitch Moore of Rutgers. Um, ended up doing a, a looking pretty good against uh, Vance in Minnesota, North Carolina. Or Liam, 
Lachlan McNeil, I want to say Liam McNeil for some reason, uh, <laughs> had a North Carolina 5-1 decision and then um, obviously gets to the finals and, and just loses, which kind of a little bit of a sting, I guess, but still gets All-American. So, yeah, yeah I, mean, I, I don't know how you feel about that one. Yeah, um, you know, it's definitely frustrating to watch him, you know, not shoot a couple matches and, uh, man. I was just super, super stoked for him that he got to the finals because mm-hmm. um, I didn't think that he would let Mendez beat him twice. And in Bo's defense, <clears throat> he's the only one that took a shot in the finals match. I think he took two great shots. One got countered and they went out of bounds. The second one, he just got countered and mm-hmm. Mendez got the points at the end of the match. But... Bo took two great shots in that that finals match. He took chances to win. He just got countered and lost. And I think you kind of saw on his face when he got countered and Mendez ended up on top. He kind of looked down at the mat and like you could see him nod his head like, "Damn, like this this one hurts." Yeah. But the crazy thing is, he walked back to the circle at the end of the match, and he had a big, big smile on his face. And every single kid that walked on that podium, Bo clapped for him. I don't think there's a better kid in the country than Bo Bartlett. In terms of just a person, um, yeah. he clapped for every single kid at, the, at his weight class that placed. And I think he, um, I hope he comes back. I hope he comes back and I hope he wins it. Um, I think he deserves one more than most people. But um, <clears throat> yeah, mm-hmm. I, I agree with you. There was a, those, those first couple of matches, um, you know, you kind of saw that that less than confident bow where he just doesn't really want to get shots off. And I hope that's something he works on the off season. um, If he chooses to come back, but Mm -hmm. um, a great year from him, you know, the two losses come both coming from Mendez Mendez being the national champ, you know, he, he knows he can beat Mendez because he beat him at the duel, but Mm -hmm. uh, just didn't beat him really when it counted. So um, I hope he comes back though. I really do. So, yeah. Uh, next up, 149 pounds, number seven seed, Tyra Kasich. Another slow start, losing to Jaden Abbas of Stanford to start the match yeah. or start the uh, tournament. Um, what it, it, before we even talk about Kasich, is there just something wrong with these guys not being prepared for like match number one? Like, <laughs> I feel like they're losing like a lot of these first matches. Um, you know, a lot of people were like, Jaden Abbas mm-hmm. beat, beats Kasich, huge upset, all this stuff. Jaden Abbas was an All American last year, mm-hmm. <laughs> so fair. Just had nine losses this year and got a shitty seed, but yeah. um, no, I I don't think it's a I don't think it's a you know we're not ready for the first round kind of thing. This is a crazy tournament and everybody's capable of beating anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, you see a lot of crazy stuff happen. I remember in 2014 when I went, one of the Dardane brothers from um, Minnesota got beat the first round, and he was like the two seed and got beat by a guy with a pigtail and. <laughs> I think he lost two matches and was done, and he was the second seed. Yeah. Um, stuff happens, more but de- oh my more god, de- with the demoralizing <laughs> with the pigtail, <laughs> right, it's like, right. oh, damn, like that. I mean, that hurts a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the kid that beat him, like they had to wrestle his way into the tournament, and uh, jeez, that hurts. I remember, th- I still remember that. I remember watching that that match and being like, "Holy crap, mm-hmm. he lost!" And then he lost yeah. the second match. I'm pretty sure. But um, talk about resilience. Yeah. Tyler Kasich okay. loses his first round match, wins one, wins two, wins three, wins four, wins five, wins six, wins seven straight matches. How many of them were bonus? One, one the first match was a major, the second match was a pin, the third match is a major. Yeah. Then he decisions um, Arrington, who's the third seed. Then he majors Kenner and then majors Ridge Lovett and then wins Huge. three two. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can't ask for anything more. It was unbelievable to see how he wrestled on the bottom side of that bracket. And mm-hmm. I know it sucks that he lost the first round, but that's like meant to be that he, I mean, it was awesome. It's incredible when you see somebody lose their first match and then over the span of the next three days, they got to wrestle seven times. Yeah. That's I just, crazy. I can't but, imagine what his face and his like whole body felt like the days oh after my God. that. He probably Brutal. was in, yeah. Unbelievable. Now, now let, me, let me ask you this. Do you think that first match loss kind of 
gave him that momentum to just like turn on that switch? Or do you think if he won that first match, like he could have been first? I don't really know. I mean, I was just kind of thinking that. I don't think maybe. I don't I mean, think it would have took out one out. and three along the way. So it's like right. Yeah. The thing is, is with with this tournament, you see guys who are seated really highly, and then they get dropped in that bottom side of the bracket, and they wrestle like a completely different person. Like yeah. Bridge Lovett. No offense, but I mean Bridge Lovett was. I know they had a pretty close match, but Ridge Lovett was the best kid in the country at this weight class. And mm-hmm. then when he got dropped into the bottom side of the bracket, Kasich beat him ten to one. Yeah, um, huge. So you know when the, these a lot of these kids when they're ran, when they're seated really highly, they've been ranked really highly all year, and they get dropped in the bottom side of the bracket. Something just ain't right. I'm not yeah. saying I don't want to take anything away from Kasich because I don't mean that in any sort of way. But you know you. You know you're not going to win it. It's like, what's even the point? I think. I, it's fair. I think a lot of kids feel that way. I mean, I, I hate to like point out Iowa here, but they are culprits of doing that. Spencer Lee lost and and didn't come mm-hmm. back. Alex Marinelli lost and didn't come back. Matt yeah. McDonough lost and didn't come back. I mean, they just they're like, ah, screw it. I don't. I don't even get. I don't even care to wrestle the rest of the tournament. And mm-hmm. that's a shame. But you know, I guess if you're no, you're going to fall short of your goal, then it is what it is. But yeah, yeah, I don't, I think everything worked out exactly how it was supposed to. And um, I'll tell you what, very, very interesting decision at 149 next year. Oh yeah, you're not kidding. And we'll get to that. We're going to table mm-hmm. that for later. But uh, moving on to 157 pounds, number one seed, Levi Haynes, kind of ran through his bracket. There was a little scare against Bryce. Uh, I'm not going to pronounce this Andonian. Wrong. Andonian. Oh, see, I was going to go with Andonian, but yeah. And, <laughs> see, I'm just bad with pronunciation. But uh, and- Andonian, a little scare there, but then bounced back. Mm-hmm. So he got the win, got to the finals, and then a nice nice little, cru- not, I shouldn't say a cruise, but a nice Nice little win against Teamer at uh, see I probably pronounced that one wrong too. Uh, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Good good uh really good performance from Levi Haynes, it seems like. Yeah. Um I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh when I saw Andonian start to make some run way through this bracket, mm-hmm. I was real nervous for that semifinal <laughs> match. Because Bryce Andoni is a freak yeah. and he's never been in a boring match in his entire life. And I mean, last year, Haynes wrestled him at the tournament, and Haynes had him. I mean, Andonian had Haynes on his back dead to rights, and it was like mm-hmm. he was down all these points, and the only reason Levi ended up coming back is because Andonian ran out of gas, and Haynes pinned him. Exactly what happened yeah. this year. So, um, you know, I don't think it was any secret that Levi was gonna was the overwhelming favorite to win 57, but um, mm-hmm. the Andonian match made me super nervous, and it's just because he's funky and, you know, anybody, I, f- I feel like Andonian can, can, beat every, can beat anybody if they make a certain mistake. And, you know, Haynes kind of let him in that match with that late takedown. And then he had to kind of scramble to, to get a takedown of his own and send it in overtime. And, or, excuse me, not in overtime, but mm-hmm. um, he had to scramble to, you know, get it on a leg and take another shot. And Andonian took a risk and he got stacked. and got yeah got pinned and but it was a great match and and then on the finals uh you know teamer just kind of looked like he was gonna wait for levi to make a mistake and levi is just so solid he really never made one so um you know i didn't i don't think teamer was ever i don't think it was in the game plan to really take a bunch of shots and stuff like that teamer just kind of i mean i know he beat cardenas and majored him in the semis but he had a pretty tight tournament seven three four one sun victory and five two over fran mm-hmm. of iowa so yeah um yeah great tournament from levi he, he got his which is great now now the next weight class it, <laughs> oh, number man. two yeah number two seed at mitch messenbrink uh the red shirt freshman had has had a pretty damn good season had a really hot start with the the tech the major six one decision and another major against Caliendo, and then goes into the finals and just bam loses and it's like son of a bitch and like <laughs> Um, just overall thoughts on this whole tournament for Mitch. I thought he was going to win it all, to be honest. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. When I saw he had Carr instead of O'Toole, which was a sick match. O'Toole <laughs> and Carr was an awesome match. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt a lot better because I didn't think that Mitch would have 
as much of a chance against Keegan. Um, I thought Carr was the better matchup for Mitch. Mm -hmm. So I was pretty happy that he didn't have to wrestle um, uh, uh, Keegan. That being said, you know, um, I think Mitch, not saying this cost him the match or anything like that, but I think Mitch, he's a little too loose at the beginning, and you saw Carr just go and blast double him and take him down, I think, the first, like, 20 seconds. Yeah. And I don't think that necessarily cost him the match. I think that the match was lost because Mitch wasn't aware the riding time point was established. I think that's why he didn't shoot, because I was screaming at my freaking television, and he had to have heard me in Kansas City from Pennsylvania screaming at my television the word shoot. I mean, I was, like, emphatic, just screaming. Mm -hmm. I just wanted him to shoot and take one shot, because I knew he had car. I mean, he would have had 15 more seconds in that match. I think he wins. I think car was... Not necessarily out of gas, but I think he was getting there. And I thought the officiating this match was super funky. Obviously, I think Mitch was, like, shooting back to back to back. But Mm -hmm. they hit Carr with a stall call, like, 10 seconds after he shot, I'm pretty sure, from what I remember. Yeah. I thought the officiating in this tournament was super weird. It was weird at Big Tens, too. There was Mm -hmm. one officiating crew that had to do with that, and I'm pretty sure it was the same one that ref this match. Yeah. But it is what it is. Um. But yeah, I kind of think that Mitch wasn't super aware of the score. I think he was pretty shocked when the match ended and they were like, oh, it's over. <clears throat> but uh, and I've seen a lot of people say that they don't think Mitch will lose another match in college. I hmm. I would tend to agree with that based on this year. Oh, bit. yeah. But, <laughs> but the thing is, you never know because um, there are these kids that come out of high school and they're like hammers and they come in and they're super, super good. And yeah. You know, I'm not willing to commit to that, but I don't think Mitch will mm-hmm. lose another match at the national tournament. I think he'll be a three time national champion. Um, I don't know if necessarily he'll go undefeated the rest of his career, though. But um, yeah. this is going to be another really super interesting situation for Penn State next year. And in, on an even broader scheme, it's going to be a really good weight class moving into next year because we've already had a transfer happen. Mm hmm. I mean, he's at Oklahoma State now. He left Wisconsin. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, really good tournament, just a disappointing outcome. And, mm-hmm. you know, it sucks, but it is what it is. So let me ask you this. Um, if he didn't know, hypothetically, um, did you blame the coaching staff on that for not kind of trying to relay that? Or do you think you just get on the mat and you just have the blinders on and that's it? Like, you don't hear anything? Um... I think you definitely hear your coaches because I think, I mean, you have to, right? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, you, you always hear coaches like yelling Mm -hmm. things at you. I think it's more selective hearing at that point. Um, (laughs) although in, in, in my, in maybe their defense, maybe it's just me. It's selective hearing and that's why I didn't go super far in the sport, but (laughs) no, that could be it. (laughs) But, uh, no, um, I don't know who that's on. I have a really hard time believing that Kale, Casey, Jimmy, and Cody wouldn't make the wrestler mm-hmm. uh, over aware of that situation. Yeah. Maybe Mitch didn't hear him. Maybe it was too loud in there. Maybe, I have no idea. I, mm-hmm. I don't want to speculate there because I don't want to put blame on anybody without knowing, you know, um, how things went. But, uh, yeah, I just think it's an unfortunate end to a really great year for him. And, you know, it sucks, but mm-hmm. I, I felt like I see, I have a hard time. I have a hard time with this one because I think it was I think Mitch should have been aware that that riding time point was established and locked with how mm-hmm. long it took him to get off bottom after the first takedown and how long he got ridden afterwards. I mean, I kind of felt like yeah. you should know that there's a minute, like he's got a minute, like you were under, you were on bottom for a long time. Mm-hmm. I feel like you should kind of know that, but I don't know. I think that maybe also, I know a lot of people are complaining about this, but you kind of can bring in the argument that, if the riding time point is locked, maybe mm-hmm. they should just put it on the screen and put it so the wrestler yeah. sees. Like, if, if it's locked, then why isn't it being counted right away? Why do it at the end of the match and make it seem like it's still 7-7? I know that's an excuse, but, you know. 
I mean, it's fair. Like every other sport, yeah. you can you can see the scoreboard or something right. at the very least. Like, so why not why not have that up? But it is what it is. Can't look back. Um, 174 pounds. Carter Stracci started out at the nine seed, obviously because of the, the injury defaults and all that. At Big Tens. Um, not an easy road for him. Not one, but two NCAA champs he's had to go through. Um, obviously different weight weight classes, but still. Um, just overall thoughts on Carter's uh, performance. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, I, ha- I had him winning this weight, and I think a lot of people mm-hmm. had him winning this weight. And, um, you know, I don't think a lot of people knew what to expect because of Big Tens. I think there was still that looming question whether he was actually going to wrestle or not. Mm-hmm. I don't think anybody expected him not to, but, um, you know, you kind of get flashbacks of the Nick Suriano situation a few years ago when, you know, he was wrestling with the team the days before the tournament, and then he gets pulled. But I think there was just too much on the line for Carter here in terms of the four time and all that mm-hmm. stuff. So, yeah, um, yeah, I thought he wrestled cautiously, but I think that this was more a testament of one how much better Carter is than everybody in the country. Fair, <laughs> and two, uh, broadening on that first point. Because he wrestled with one leg. And mm-hmm. two, um, you know, he put on a, a really good defensive performance. He didn't give up a point to in his last three matches, which were two mm-hmm. national champs and then a national runner-up. Um, no points given up. Mm-hmm. Um, you could tell, though, that that knee is, that knee is definitely hurt. I mean, oh, yeah. the first match against Sparks... Sparks had him on a single in that leg, and he immediately gave it up. Immediately. Mm -hmm. Didn't even mess with it. And I'm happy he did that, but seeing that, you have to think that everybody at that weight class saw that, and that Mm -hmm. leg was a target. Um, You know, I think it's a testament to how how good he is, that he probably won an NCAA title on a torn ACL, and, (laughs) you know, we've seen Spencer Lee do that with I think both of his knees are uh, from what I remember. Maybe it's just, maybe he had just one, but um, I don't know. I have that same ringtone or same yeah, alarm. Yeah, it's I, the same. Yeah. 815 yeah. every P- morning, man. PTSD. Just can't, just kiss him on the wake. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I mean, yeah, really good tournament and really mm-hmm. good, really good defensive display. And, um, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think he should be wrestling Olympic trials, but <laughs> hey, you know, he's going to. Try yeah. at the very least. Right. Um, 184 pound Bernie Truax came in number six seed. Uh, quick tech, uh, four two decision, major loss, and then bounced back a little bit, and then lost again in the semis. But uh, he did major Salazar, which I thought was impressive. But it goes might be going back to what you said before when guys get this consolation, they're like, I'm done. Screw it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean. Bernie had a good tournament. He just got hit with plot and plot just plot just yeah. put it on him. So uh, you know, obviously that sucks, but Bernie had a really good tournament and uh, you know, to take fifth and to like you said, he majored uh Salazar for fifth and mm-hmm. um really good career for him. I'm happy he came to Penn State for his final year. He he was a lot of fun to watch and um yeah, can't can't be upset with what Bernie did this year. He was a lot of fun and mm-hmm. a great fill-in at 84. So, yeah, um, I think he placed right where, uh, right kind of where he should have. Uh, mm-hmm. I think fifth's pretty good representation of where he was this year. I think, you know, I had Salazar winning, and that was kind of recency bias because at Big Tens it just kind of seemed like, oh. Uh, as good as Bernie's looked all year, I just felt like mm-hmm. he really couldn't do too much against Salazar, so I just kind of went with that. But Parker just had a great year, and you know yeah, he could arguably phenomenal. he could arguably win the Hodge. He had more actually more bonus point victories than Brooks did. So um, yeah, that's that's where it's going to get interesting. Uh, speaking yeah. of Brooks, nice little segue there. Uh, One hundred ninety-seven pounds. Brooks kind of just ran through that bracket. Um, yeah, there's I don't know what else you really want to say. There is relatively easy for him. Yeah, um, I thought the Hidley match would be a little tighter, to be completely honest with you, because uh, <clears throat> the Hidley boys are just really, really good. And, 
Yeah. Um, Trent had an awesome year, and, uh, you know, he really emerged as the leader of that NC State team the last few years after Mm -hmm. um, Hayden left. But I expected that match to be tighter, and Brooks has kind of outclassed him in every position. He looked great. Um, Yeah. Really, really, really good year for him. And um, obviously him and Carter both getting the uh, four-time label, which is pretty incredible the same year, going from zero to two of them. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's Super all American too, which is always yeah. cool. Like, yeah. yeah, hell of a performance for this season from Brooks. But uh, last but not least, uh, almost the same thing. I shouldn't say he ran through the racket because the the Feldman match was close. But Kurt yeah. basically, for the most part, Tech major one zero decision, which was like, eesh. and then eight uh, one decision, thirteen four major. So it's like, yeah, um, Fel- the Feldman match was really strange because he's wrestled Feldman twice this year and he's really mm-hmm. had his way with him both times. Um, though Duel was a, an ass whooping and then Big Ten finals, Feldman took him down first, but then Kirk didn't give up a point the rest of the match from what I remember. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but uh, then he had to wrestle Schultz in the semis and Schultz has beaten him once or twice. Um, but Kirk Kirk was the best heavyweight in the country this year. I don't think that was too much of a question anymore. No. Um, but he looked great and then he he took care of Davison who had a great yeah, great I'm tournament. Say, shout out to Davison for yeah, making awesome that run. tournament. Awesome yeah. tournament to make the finals, beat the three seed, beat the two seed. Um younger mm-hmm. best Eda, man. What phew. Yeah, insane. So uh, <laughs> now there is five finalists for the Hodge Trophy. Four of them are Nittany Lions: Levi Haynes, Starachi, Brooks, Kirk. Uh, now you might, like you mentioned before, Parker's also among that group. Ninety uh, percent bonus rate, whereas Brooks is a ninety-one percent bonus rate. It says. Um, okay. So I think the I think does Parker have more more like, wins? He more has matches. more wins, and yeah, yeah okay, yeah. yeah, and he's Part- got yeah. He's got less falls, but more majors, or is it vice versa? Yeah, uh, I think it's less falls, more majors. Um, I got to okay. double check on that. But uh, I'm assuming you're still in the same boat. You still feel Brooks deserves this one? Yeah, I mean, I think if Brooks was like winning his first or second national title, I think he could go with Parker because of the uh, the win rate and uh, more matches and stuff like that. And um, I think I I would I. When I saw the graphic the other day, there isn't a category for like points let up or points allowed or whatever. But mm-hmm. I think that Brooks will probably win it just based on the fact that he also had the four time this year. I mean, obviously, Strachi did too, but Strachi had the medical forfeits. And he also, because of that, wasn't as dominant throughout mm-hmm. the course of the year. Um, not even because of the knee. He had a couple of close matches when he was sick and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think you have to give it to Brooks because of the culmination of everything. but. It could it could go another way, but we'll see. You think it's mostly just Brooks or Parker, though? Yeah. Like there's, no, there's no outside chance where it's just like, you know, Starachi, wrestle on one leg, blah, blah, blah. No, because it's not a – it's it's the most dominant – like it's the yeah. most dominant wrestler. So I just think, you know – You can argue that one a little bit. Yeah, I guess you could. Dominant, but... like one leg, like <laughs> – I think uh, – I th- the thing is with Carter, though, is – there were point. I mean, he got hurt. He hurt that knee the last match of the year. True. Brooks was super. Like to me, throughout the whole year from start to finish, if I was like, if I had to put money on somebody to win, I was putting it on Brooks, not Starachi. That's just okay. me. That's fair. Fair enough. Um, now, next year we talked about it a little bit before, but it's going to be very, very interesting. Um, so let's just go quickly through all the weights. I think you'd have to start Davis <clears throat> again, right? Like without a doubt. Um, yeah. hopefully he figures out some of those, he, he's a true freshman. So, I mean, I can't, like, I know you, you said before you're a little upset with the way he's got to grow up and all that, but, um, yeah, he's, a, he's, he's, you know, he's pretty you think young. He'd so. learn. Yeah. You <laughs> think, he, you think he'll learn, um, 133 in the gal again, right? Probably more yeah. than likely. Yeah. Um, number of 141, I've seen different projections here. Yeah. There's seen, a couple uh, things here. It depends on Bo. Yeah. So now if Bo comes back, which he, Kind of hinted at it in his Instagram post. Um, his his last sentence was, "I'm not do- I'm not done taking risks." So you would assume probably coming back. Mm-hmm. If he does come back, you obviously give it to him, right? If he doesn't, yeah. 
What do you do? Do you move? You bump Kasich to one forty one? Is that on? If he does, well, so Kasich's a forty one pounder. Um, like he's listed at forty one, so yeah, that'd be the ideal. You know, the easiest uh, switch. That up. would be yeah. That would be the way to do it. You put him at forty one. You put Van Ness at forty nine. If Bo comes back, I could see them red shirting Kasich. Okay. And then when Bo leaves, you put him at 41, and then you have Van Ness, and that's ironed out. Mm -hmm. Um, But things are very weird there because, um, you know, if you – I don't think they'll do this because it's just very congested, but if Bo comes back, is there a chance that they, like, put Kasich at 49 and then put Van Ness at 57 and then bump Haynes Mm -hmm. at 65 and then bump Mezzo – I just don't think that's going to happen. Um, I think if Bo comes back, they're going to redshirt Kasich and they're going to start Bo and start Van Ness. And I think that's probably the most logical thing to do. And, you know, I think it's been kind of weird how we've heard nothing about Van Ness, but we mm. were told it was, wasn't was a knee issue. Uh, I believe it was a knee issue. Or after speculated. The, uh, yeah. Speculated as a knee issue after the, uh, the NWCA <clears throat> Classic All-Star thing. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I would see him in matches all the time and he did not look like he had a knee problem. That's nope. where it gets interesting, and especially in today's day and age with the transfer portal being the way it is. I know it's not maybe not as active in wrestling compared to football and basketball, but it seems like this off season it might be already because we're already seeing movement. Yeah. So yeah. And it was is there super any quick. chance like one of these guys just says like if Bo comes back and one of these guys is like, Yo, I just finished third, like at the at the podium. And now Van Ness is like, hey, maybe I'm not starting. I have to compete for my job. Fuck that. I can go somewhere else and start at like almost anywhere else. I was talking to somebody about this yesterday. Mm-hmm. And I have a hard time seeing Kasich or Van Ness like sitting down and being like, well... I can't beat this guy or I don't want to compete for the job and be like, mm-hmm. well, I'm leaving. I just don't think that's going to happen because okay. Fair enough. like as crappy as it is, I don't think anybody wants to take a red shirt when they've already started and proven that they can win. Cause like Megalutis did it. He yeah. all American three times and then took a red shirt and then came back and won a national title as a senior. So mm-hmm. I don't think anybody wants to do that, but I don't see anybody being like, oh, I'd rather leave and I'd rather mm-hmm. start and wrestle than just suck it up and redshirt for a year and get better and stay on this team. Where I'm yeah. probably going to win another team title, you know, That's next true. year, the year after, whatever. Yeah. So, um, no, I don't think anybody's going to leave, but I, I'm, I'm, I'd be really surprised if if one of them decided to leave. But. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Um, you know, Haynes is going into his junior year. So, you know, he's got two left. You know, Kasich, red shirts. I mean, it's, you know, you you can't wait for that and then bump, you know. it. And then you have to worry about incoming freshmen and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. But no, I think that Bo, Bo comes back, gets 41. I think Van Ness takes 49 next year and they red shirt, red shirt Kasich. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, 157, <clears throat> no brainer. Levi Haynes, yeah, the guy. Um, mm-hmm. I think he still has two more years left. Uh, yes, but yeah, so no brainer there. Same probably goes for Mitch at 165. Three years left for him. Um, so again, another no brainer. Uh, 174. So Starachi's probably not returning. You mentioned before. Right. So do they go for Kundo? Do they go transfer portal? I think that 74 and 65 could be interchangeable. I would expect Mitch okay. to probably stay at 65 because I think mm-hmm. the Kundo is a more natural 74 just okay. based on his size. So you think it's um, going to be Facundo? Yeah, yeah, I think it's going to be Facundo. He was he looked really good last year and I think he just kind of hit a mental block or something <laughs> like that because he just didn't wrestle where a lot of people saw the potential early in the year. He looked really mm-hmm. good early in the year and I think he just kind of stopped. Yeah. But uh yeah, I think he'll take 74. He had an Olympic redshirt this year. I'm sure he's been getting better and so I would expect him to be at 74 and gotcha. Mitch to say 65. I don't think Mitch is I think Mitch would be a little undersized for 74. I think okay. like if you look at Starachi, 
and then you look at Mitch, I think it's pretty evident that Strachi's yeah. like much larger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's one of the. Uh, it seems like one of the bigger guys for 174 though, too. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I know, ironic because it's all 174 pounds. But... Yeah, but yeah, I mean <laughs> yeah. everybody's built different. Like, yeah, um, look at Truax and Salazar. Salazar is true. huge compared mm -hmm. to true like Truax. Truax yeah. is just long and lanky. Uh, speaking of Truex, now he's gone. They brought him in from Cal Poly this last year. He was pretty good. Do they go portal again? They have Josh Barr waiting in the wings. Do they go with the young the young buck? Like, what do you think they kind of do here? Josh Barr is a badass. I'm gonna say him. He okay. looks so good. He wrestled against Indiana and looked mm -hmm. unbelievable. Um, you know, you got Lucas Cochran in there too, but I would think that he probably gets 97. If they don't go with one that of the mirrors, yeah. if they don't go with Mirasola next year, they mm -hmm. could bring him in as a true freshman, and and he could probably start. But yeah, I would take Bar. Bar is going to be uh, Bar is going to be really good next year. Bold okay. take here, but I think he'll probably I think he'll be an All American if he starts. Hmm. <clears throat> All right. uh, you kind of just uh, tipped your hand here at one ninety seven, but um, you, you're thinking Cochran because it's another weight they probably could go portal if they had to. I think it'll either be Cochran or it'll, it'll be um, uh, one of the Mirasola twins. I think Cole mm -hmm. is the young, I think Cole is the younger one. Um, yeah, I, I would expect, uh, or not the younger one, but the smaller one. Excuse me. Um, I think he'll pro. I think he might get a crack at ninety-seven, but I might be wrong. But I think it's vice versa. I think Cole's the bigger one. Okay. Yeah, if I'm reading this chart correctly that we have on our site. Okay. I yeah. I would I would think that he the Mirasola gets ninety seven, but I guess mm -hmm. we could see because you also have Friccioni who was listed at ninety seven and two eighty five. But I would think that if Kirk doesn't come back, then Friccioni will take heavyweight, or it could be the okay. other Mirasola. Oh, you really think? I was going to say you think it's uh you don't think they you, you think they hit the transfer portal at all? I guess. I think they'll let kids come if they want to, but I don't yeah. know if they necessarily need somebody to come in and like, like a true X or an ago where there's like mm -hmm. very few guys at that weight across the team that are, um, uh, like ready to start and ready to contribute. Like Davis, in all honesty, was kind of like. Nobody, I don't think anybody would have seen it coming other mm -hmm. than like maybe Davis's family. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, yeah, my kid's gonna, my kid's the best, you know. Hey, but, uh, every, every parent says it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know if there's anybody, um, like that this year where they're gonna go out and kind of look. I mean, I know there's a lot of rambling on about this with like mm. the portal now and NIL and that's what I was going to say stuff. But like little rock had a really good year this year as a team. True. And I think a lot of people are worried about the smaller schools getting poached by the bigger schools. Mm -hmm. And I think that that argument has a lot of validity, but if a kid wants to go to a bigger program and they almost looked at going to a smaller school as like going to a junior college and then transferring, yeah. then that's our prerogative. But, um, yeah, I think that everybody they that Penn State needs in terms of filling in holes for the lineup next year is either on the team now or is coming in as a true freshman. So, okay. <clears throat> now uh, we have a couple weeks off before some more wrestling news. I feel like uh, April twentieth, nineteenth. I think it starts actually. Yeah, um, Olympic team, team trials. Yeah, they'll be at State College, so that's gonna be fun to watch. Um, but I, that's really all we got right now. Uh, a, lot, a lot of interesting stuff. We'll see what the lineup looks like for next year, but. Uh, anything else, Joe, before we sign off? No, I don't think so. It was a fun year, though. Yeah, real fun year. Another team title. Awesome. Not super surprising, but... Um, no. <laughs> all right. Well, for me and Joey, that's another episode of the PSU 365 podcast. Signing off. <laughs>